Hi, millionaires. You are tuning in to Suddenly Still Podcast, Episode 9, and today's topic is You're So Strong. I hear this so much. Oh my goodness, you're so strong. How do you go through all that you go through? How do you balance everything that you balance from being a mom, a wife, a full-time entrepreneur, um, podcast, to just being present for yourself, and then you lost your son and all this stuff? And I tell people, I, I, I used to say, I don't know, to be honest. I used to say, I don't know, but I always say, because of God. The strength that I have is the like literally could only come from God. Why I say this is because for one, things that I have went through did break me. I'm not going to say they almost broke me. They did break me. They broke me to my knees. They broke me down to the core. So sometimes I used to wonder Will I ever get through this? Am I going to get through this? And then that faith, that mustard seed faith will kick in and say, yes, you will. You got it. As long as you trust in God and lean not to your own understanding, you got it. But once you start leaning to your own understanding when it don't make sense and all of that stuff and you start fiddling and faddling with is it going to be or if or but then that's when the trouble comes. You're so strong. Is a very, listen, you're so strong is three words, a short phrase that means so much to so many people. And honestly, just to hear the words, you're so strong will uplift somebody to hear the words. You're so strong will bring somebody out of a dark place to hear the words. You're so strong will let others know that what you may not feel on the inside, they can see on the outside. See, you're so strong. Even when you're weak, you're so strong. Even when it feels like everything is sideways and everything's not going down one straight and narrow path. You're so strong even when the road is rocky. You're so strong because strength is within you. It's not on you. It's what's in you. And if you don't have the strength within you, then you're not so strong. So when people see what's on the outside, it's because of what's projected from the inside. Strength is it comes from within the strength of a woman, the strength of a mother, the strength of a man. Men go through a lot. Men, it's like, it seems like everybody see men as strength. Men literally come with strength. You automatically think a man is strong. They don't cry much. They don't show their emotions much. That's just how they were created. They were created to be the backbone. They were created to be the foundation, the sole provider and all of that stuff from back in the day to now. However, when it comes down to seeing the strength of a woman, oh, <laughs> baby, nothing can compare to the strength of a woman because women have a different type of strength. We might not be physically strong, but a woman has a mental strength of three, 13,000 giants. A woman has the mental and emotional strength of 50,000 people. Now, granted, there are some people that are just emotionally weak. There are some people that are just emotionally distraught and they cannot mo- emotionally get themselves together. But when you see a woman that can, oh, yeah. She's so strong. And when you see a man that can navigate and weather through the storm, single fathers, there are single fathers out there, not just single moms. There are single fathers out there that's handling up just like a mom would. We don't have to stereotype to this is a man's job or this is a woman's job. When you see a strong person in general, you automatically say, dang, you're so strong. You're not like, dang, you're so strong for a man or dang, you're so strong for a woman. Unless you see them lifting things physically. But when you just see a person out there handling up, when you see a person out there grinding and doing what it is necessary for their livelihood or their children, you look at them like, dang, you so strong. Or when you see somebody that went through so much trauma, so much heartache or trial after trial, and you see them triumphantly battling, battling back and forth, back and forth. And they're just literally navigating the storm, riding the wave. You look at them like, dang. You so strong. So like the words you're so strong go so far when it comes down to a compliment. That is one of the best compliments you can ever get is you're so strong, especially when you're telling a person that that is in the middle of the valley. The person that just cried in the shower, the person that just pleaded and begged God to help them through what they're going through. The person that is broken, the person, the person that is mentally distraught, the person that is anxious every day. The person that can't see a way out of what they're what they're going through right now. A person that who has more money than they have bills. That might be you. You might be the person that is going through so much havoc. But there's somebody out there that sees you as being so strong because if they were going through it, they would have broke. They would have not just broke. They would have got over. It would have got all on top of them. It would have beat them down to the ground. Not only would they have been broken, they would have been covered in mud because they couldn't even mend themselves back together. Or they didn't trust God to do that very thing. Mend them back together or restore or renew them or make them a new person, a new creature. They don't have that. They don't have. Some people are just. Listen, 
people can be jealous of your strength as well. People could be jealous of the fact that you, they don't know how it is that you're doing what you're doing. They don't know how it is that you're still standing. They don't know how it is that you're still alive after everything you went through. They don't know how it is that you still walk with a confidence that they didn't ever have, even when they were at their best. They don't know what it took to be you. And they see you as so strong because you are. You're stronger than you think. See, yes, you have more bills than you have money. And yes, your car might be broken down and keep giving you trouble. And yes, the business might be slow or barely making money. And yes, your children might be all over the place. And yes, you're doing your very best to keep yourself together. But you've been looking a little balmy lately. Yes, your hair's not done. Yes, you don't have a haircut or a lineup. But you're so strong. Because even though you're in the middle of whatever valley you're in the middle of, you're strong enough because you're continuing to press forward. You're not wrapped up in a blanket all day for weeks weeks and months at a time you're so strong because you're still alive and there's people that are in the grave right now because they were not strong enough or at least they didn't feel that they were strong enough you're so strong because in the end of the day you didn't have an option you don't have an option to be strong you either are strong or you're not there's no in between when someone looks at me and say you're so strong I, I sometimes want to say what choice did I have but I can't say that, duh. And I wouldn't. But what options do you have? You either have strength or you have weakness. There's nothing really in between. And I feel like in only on the only L's I'm taking right now are lessons. I'm not taking no losses. When I put in my mind that I'm going to trust God and I'm going to trust him with my whole mind and my whole heart and all of that, I felt that, listen, if you're going to pray, don't worry. If you're going to worry, don't pray. Because in the end of the day, you're wasting your time in God's. At that point, if you're going to pray and worry, then why are you praying in the first place? If you don't trust that God's going to do exactly what you tell, what you asked him to do, ain't no point of you praying. What you praying for? What are you praying for? Are you praying for a breakthrough? Are you praying for a financial blessing? Are you praying for your mind? Are you praying for those kids that are haywire? Are you praying for that job that you want? Are you praying because you're in between jobs and you don't know where the money finna come and you got bills and stuff due? Are you praying for specific things? Are you asking God just, Lord, you know my heart. You know the desires of my heart. Grant me the desires of my heart. Baby, your heart wants so much. Your heart wants 50,000 things. Pick a couple. Pray on those. We not trying to we yes, God knows our hearts and all of that stuff. And it's and it's amazing. God does know our hearts. However, you want to also make sure that you you put a couple things specifically on your heart, mind and soul and pray about those because you're so strong and your strength didn't come from just you alone. It came from God and somewhere, somehow. Your strength is what's going to keep you going, even in times where you feel like you can't do it. You might be in a place where you feel like this is it. You might have been going through mental anxiety attacks after anxiety attack. Your mind is all over the place. You're depressed. You barely want to go out the house, but you're tired of being in the house. But you don't want to go out the house because you're, you have social anxiety. So you don't really want to be around other people. Your misery might not like company. So now you'd rather be miserable in your home, but your home has so many depressive things in it. And, and the vibes in your home ain't even peace. So I don't know why you want to be there anyways. However, it's your safe place. It's your safe haven. So I get it. But you want something and you don't know what because you want so many things and like you have to pick a couple things like pick a couple things that you want from God. The thing prioritize your desires, prioritize the desires of your heart. That's what we're going to say. Prioritize the desires of your heart. Yeah, you might want a big house, a big car and all that, st a nice car. Um, you might want, excuse me, the big house with the long driveway. I want that too. But. That's not a desire. That's not a need right now. Right now, I want stability. Right now, I want consistency and growth and elevation of my business. Right now, I want to be mentally strong. Right now, I want to be mentally clear from anxiety and depression in the hands of that. Right now, God, I want me. And, I, and I'm not even going to say I want me back because whatever I don't no longer have, maybe God didn't allow me to be that person anymore because he sees the elevation that I'm, I've been praying for. I've been asking God to elevate me and do all these things. So instead of asking God, Lord, put me back into that place that I was in no 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 help me to get that faith that I had back then because back then I stressed less yes I had less money but I didn't worry I didn't worry as much put me back
back in that place of faith where I trust you first and not after I've already tried to figure it out. Put me back in a place where I pray first and I ask you first and I seek ye first the kingdom of God so that everything can be added unto me. Not let me go search for all the things that I won't seek them first. When I realize they don't work, then I go back to God. I can't. Don't let me do that. I don't want to do that. You don't need to do that. You don't seek first the things that you want. God don't need nothing from you. You don't need everything from him. So why would you do the, the very thing as in, why would you not do exactly what he asked you to do? How about that? God don't need your help. He don't need your help. You need his. He don't need your blessings. You need his. He don't need what you have to offer and all the offerings that you have. He don't need them. But you need the blessing that he pours down from the offerings that you give. It's so much better to be obedient than to sacrifice. So if you dig deep into the strength that you have within yourself and understand that things, decisions got to be made. Sometimes decisions got to be made that you don't want to make. Sometimes changes have to be made that you don't want to change. Sometimes things happen in your life because they're trying to push you to that place that you've been asking God to go. But you're so stuck here because that's your comfort. You're so stuck here because that's your place. You're so stuck here that you can't, you won't move. You're supposed to be unmovable for God, not unmovable for yourself and your own heart's desire. That's why I said prioritize the desires of your heart. You don't, God don't, I'm telling you, God ain't going to break in your house. Mentally, physically, emotionally, you, your house, you, God ain't going to break in. You got to let him in the doors of your heart. You got to open up for him to come in. So therefore your strength got to come from him. Your, your, your trust, all of that got to come from him because if it doesn't, I'm telling you, it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. You're going to continue to fight, 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 fight. And yes, the fight going to be fighting and you're going to be trying to fight through it, but your strength come from God. So when someone says to you, you're so strong. It's because you are strong. Continue to lean on strength, even when it feels like what you're going through is literally the end. Lean on strength, even when it feels like this is, I'm telling you, I can't, I can't get out of this. Lean on strength, even when the bills are due. Lean on strength, even when you don't have the amount of money that you need in your bank account. Lean on strength, even when the sales of that business is going slow and low and all of that stuff. Lean on strength, even when you got money in your bank account and everything else is good around your life. Make sure you don't forget God when everything is good. Don't just call on him when things are bad. Have a mutual relationship with him. Have a good, strong relationship with God. Don't just use God. God, he don't need to be your just your rebound. Get a relationship, marry him, all that. Keep him first and everything. I'm telling you, everything will work out. But I definitely want to just keep this short today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure that you are listening and tuning in on YouTube. You can watch the videos on YouTube and listen on Spotify, Pandora, um, Apple Podcasts, uh, iHeartRadio Podcasts, literally all the major platforms we are on. Make sure that you subscribe on those platforms. Please, please, please. And interact with us, especially on YouTube. Interact with me. It's not an us. It's a me. So make sure that you're interacting with me, especially on um, Suddenly Still Podcast, Facebook, The Reels, The Instagram, The TikTok. I we I we literally post um our reels on there just certain clips small clips from the episodes just for you guys can get some type of teaser of what the episode is going to be about so make sure that you are tuning in on all platforms make sure you follow me at, on all platforms at Star Erica and at Suddenly Still Podcast thank you so much for tuning in have a great one. <laughs>